is our ladder of top five teams and players that have the most pressure on them to win a championship. Um, do you want to start at one? Because I feel like we might have the same one. Nah, well, can we start at five? Start at five. All right, go ahead. Away. You start at five. Okay, my fifth team is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Ooh, okay. Explain. Um, with the Timberwolves right now, obviously they're leading the Western Conference. They're first. Mm -hmm. um, last night, Cat just Cat went crazy despite the, them losing the game. Right. Uh, Chris Finch, their head coach, he inadvertently yeah he benched him in in the post game. He inadvertently said that he, Cat was stat padding during the game mm -hmm. to to get more buckets, which yeah. I don't know about about that decision as a head coach. But at the same time, the Timberwolves they're they're still leading the Western Conference. They have the best defense in the entire league. Uh, Rudy Gobert he's most likely gonna win Depoy again. Which y'all gotta put some more respect on my boy Gobert. The whole league gotta put more respect on Rudy Gobert as an all time great. The all time defending great, so I'll leave it at that. But let me continue. You just want to see it in the playoffs. It's gonna happen in the playoffs. The no, the defense is legit this year, though. Mm -hmm. Their offense is a bit sketchy. G, but, G I'll let you yo, finish. no, it is very sketchy. But yeah, with the Timberwolves, top seed team in the Western Conference, mm -hmm. best defense. Mm -hmm. All the guys are gelling together. There's no locker room issues. Cat and and Gobert leading this team yeah. to to wins every night, yeah. and so right now with how we see the Western Conference, it's wide open. There's no oh, clear sure. favorite. Well, the Nuggets. They, like, it, well, they they've been they've been really shaky at certain points in their bench. They have. Their but bench they is still a respect. huge question mark. They do the bench. The bench has a ton of question marks outside of like Reggie and Christian Braun. Mm -hmm. Everybody there is going to be getting playoff minutes for the first time. Christian Unless you Bar want to count the Christian DeAndre Braun Jordan. hasn't even been the best. The same. Be yeah, yeah, he hasn't been the same from no, their postseason run. Uh, shout out Peyton Watson and Julian Strother. They, they've been solid this year mm -hmm. uh, for, for their in experience. But let me continue with the Wolves. Right, like I said, best team in the West, mm -hmm. elite defense, mm -hmm. no locker room issues. This is the perfect time for them, for them to get a deep run. And with how this team's currently structured, the third highest cap space, limited flexibility to move players uh, moving forward, kind of an aging roster mm -hmm. with guys like Mike Conley. Uh, he's been great been, this year. Yeah, he's been solid. Very, very great point guard to have alongside uh, the, the big three of Ant, Cat, and Gobert, mm -hmm. uh, being that low usage playmaking guard uh, at, at the point. This is the perfect year for this Timberwolves team. To make a deep run, a Western Conference Finals type run, perfect team in a I, perfect year. I mean, you sold me. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like Timber Timberwolves didn't make my list. They were probably six or seven um, with the Cavs, but like, I mean, that's that's a great point because I don't know. They have so many players that have to like prove it. Like, how many times has Cat not showed up in the playoffs? How many times has Rudy not showed up in the playoffs? Mike, ah. <laughs> Mike, Mike Conley is this dude who's always – Mike Conley and Rudy Gobert are these dudes who have always been notorious regular season winners but haven't been able to get over the hump in the playoffs. Um, you have Chris Finch, who, like, he's probably coaching for his job right now depending on how the, how the what, what goes on in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And then it's like you say they're the one seed now, but just two, three months ago we were talking about should you split up, should you trade Cat to split him and, and, and Gobert up, which mm – -hmm. I do think we got to give some credit to Cat and how well he's been able to adopt to that four position this year. Yeah, um, yeah, he's been great this year. He's been great. But yeah, yeah, I think that's a very good argument. Um, at my five, I had the Phoenix Suns. I had the Phoenix Suns. Um, they've actually looked pretty good when the big three has played. They're finally getting healthy now. Um, but I feel like they're just an impatient organization, right? Matt Ishbia, he bought the team. He was he's the owner, and and like the first month or two. That he's there, he trades for Kevin Durant, trades to Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, and four first round picks. Mm. And I think the way they went out last year was kind of a disaster, or not a disaster, but like it was really just Book and Beal and nobody else, mm. or I mean Book and and KD and nobody else. Um, and this year, if if the same thing happens, I can't help but think that the roster is going to have to change because they have to look at what's happening, see that the big three like having four max players and then just getting like kind of some minimums around them is is not a, is not reliable or not applicable in today's NBA. And 
I think that that's a reality that they'll have to confront if they have an early playoff exit. Okay, so you're talking about a change being be, being put in place down the line. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, they're one of the most expensive rosters in the entire league. Where is the flexibility with this team? That's what I'm saying. It's like you have your three max guys all making over $40 million. Beal's on the most expensive contract in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, Nurkic is getting Nurkic, money as well. I was well. going to say, Nurkic is getting twenty. And then that's basically it. All yeah. the other guys, you brought in Aaron Gordon or Eric Gordon on a minimum. Yudo Watanabe on a minimum. Base um, D up on a minimum. Yeah, Kata Bates D up on a minimum. Um, Justice Winslow's on a minimum. Chemezi Metu's on a minimum. Drew Eubanks isn't on a minimum, but he's like making like four million a year. Um, and then I don't know what, I think Grayson Allen is making like 10, but. Yeah, he's he, making nine million. Nine million, but what, mm-hmm. with what he's providing, that's fine. Like if he's 50, 40, 90. He's been, like, their third or fourth best player this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, I just think that that, whether it's trading Beal, I don't know what type of value Beal will have if they have an early playoff exit mm-hmm. with that contract. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think KD will go. As a Knicks fan, I'm keeping one eye on Booker. I, if they have an early playoff exit, I would love Booker. I don't think D-Book leaving Phoenix. I, I think he loves it there too much. See, he loves, Yeah. I don't know, though. Like, he wants to win, though. He mm-hmm. wants to win. I don't think, like, you can always trade KD, but um, I don't think you're getting the same value that you got for KD before. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Which is why you might try to go get, or you might try to sell Book, or you might try to sell Beal, and instead of having these, like, three stars, you try to just get better role players and better pieces around them. Not, no, if if that were to happen, if they were able to trade one of the three guys, Booker would be, be the last option. It would have to be Beal. Yeah. Yeah. But, I don't know. It it probably would be Booker as the last guy to go, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But, oh my gosh. Him and Brunson in the backcourt would be to die for. Yeah, that's never happening. <laughs> Bro, hey, ev- every it, time... Clip it if it happens. Clip it if it happens. I know for a fact. I know for a fact. The camera's on me. I know for a fact that's not happening. And we've seen... All of the rumors before about this Knicks team, uh-huh. whether it was KD Kyrie, KD Kyrie, Donovan Mitchell, Damian Lillard. No, nobody wanted them. You were putting us in the dim sweepstakes. Nobody wanted him. He, well, Joe, Joel Embiid down the line. I don't see Joel Embiid being a Knicks soon. It's just we'll get to the 76ers and Joel in this conversation. Oh, oh we're, we're going to for sure. It, it's never happening. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Let, let, let's be completely honest with mm-hmm. the Knicks. And I don't care with you or any Knicks fan on social media, X, Instagram, TikTok, has to say about that. It, it won't happen. Hey, but maybe it's a good thing that it's not happening, right? Like, we traded for Melo. We saw where that took the franchise in a poverty. Y- y'all, y'all didn't even put enough help around Melo to begin with. That, that's true. That's very true. I'd agree with that. Raymond Felton being your starting point guard for that long? He did have a DPOY center. He did have a DPOY. Oh, talent, Tyson Chandler was nice. He was very nice. He did have a young JR and a Mon Shumpert. But they were like young, young. Bro, Shump before the, AC, the ACL tour was special. Yeah. Bro, what, was the, what is it called? Box square bar? Um, box fade? The, the box fade. Box fade? Yeah. Was elite. The Fox fit was elite. He was a um, but he looked like a subway surface character w- with that cut on. But you know, he he was he was uh his his athleticism, uh-huh. his dunks. It though, bro, they they were crazy. But that windmill dunk he had versus Indiana in the playoffs was insane. It was, it was insane. But sure. um, but but think about like recent history, right? Nick Zion to the Knicks, right? We get the third third pick. We don't get who we want. KD Kyrie, we don't get who we want. We mm-hmm. end, we end up with like Julius Randle and Marcus Morris. That off season, um, Donovan Mitchell, like you said, we just kept everything. Um, Joel Embiid, even though like that was they, they they knew they were gonna trade hard and not Joel. Um, we didn't get any of them, and look where we are now. Maybe that's what, like like the Knicks are a respectable organization for basically the very few times of my life, and like as opposed to when we were a respectable organization, that was like that was at the end. Mm-hmm. We're actually just starting to be a respectable organization. Mm-hmm. Um, but what, what were you talking about? Um, we were talking about the Suns. The Suns, the Suns, correct. Um, but yeah, so I had Suns at five. Who was your four? I have the Phoenix Suns okay. at four, and you kind of hit the, the nail on the head with, with uh, your your reasoning. Mm-hmm. Um, 
aging core. KD's 35, Beal's 30, Nurkic is 25. He's going to turn 30 um, next season. With the Suns team and the move they've made to get KD and Bradley Beal in the offseason, every year from from here on out, mm-hmm. win now season by four with this core and KD, Book, and Beal being your three main guys moving forward. Mm-hmm. It's a every, championship or yeah, bust. It's a championship or bust season. Yeah. Uh, every year you have those three guys, and especially when you have KD and Booker mm-hmm. um, for the, the draft capital you gave up and the assets you gave up uh, to get KD in the first place to Phoenix. Right. No, and um, I just think that they have to win because especially last year, the whole excuse was, oh, this is the gelling period. Next year will be championship or bust. Mm-hmm. Well, it's next year. It has to be championship or bust. It has to be. Especially with how, like you're saying, like a wide open West. Because the Thunder are going to continue to get better. They're only going to continue to become more experienced in the league. Like, if mm-hmm. anything, the biggest concern to the Thunder right now is their age and their playoff experience. Yeah. Next year, that it's going to be a different story because they'll have some playoff experience. Mm-hmm. Um, my four was the Los Angeles Clippers. Um, you could argue it's early. I actually kind of like what my list is looking like. Um, but Harden, I, that, that's like beating a dead horse. We know about all the Harden discussion and then the playoffs, but we've also been saying, like, is this the last year for the Clippers? Is this the last year for the Clippers? Paul George wants to say it was a win-win, the Clippers-Thunder trade, even though, let's be honest, with what the Thunder have turned the picks into, being um, it was Shea, who they got as a player. j turned into a pick. And then I believe it was Cason Wallace as the other pick. Mm-hmm. That might be wrong, but um, I know J Dub for sure. Like those two are arguably, or those two are better than what Paul George has been for the Clippers, um, and younger. And so you have that. You have the new stadium coming. I know. I know Kawhi signed an extension, but Paul George still has an extension, and he's he's been a, a lot better in the playoffs. But he always has the playoff P thing over his head. Um, and it's like this is this is the best the Clippers have ever looked in my opinion. This is the most complete they've looked. I know Zubac is out, but he'll be back in plenty of time. Um, and he and, and James Harden have looked great. Kawhi's playing the best ball since he's played since um, the championship run with the Raptors. And Paul George is looking good. Ty Lue's been phenomenal. Like all the pieces are clicking. It has to be this year for the Clippers. Mm, yeah, it has to be for sure. For sure. Yeah. Which they they're one of my I don't know if you can call them a dark horse, but I do like them quite a bit in the West. I I think you could put them in the dark horse contender tier. Yeah. Like what well, what makes you think not? I mean, cause like the top four in the West is kind of like, if you look at the standings, like the top four in the West kind of has an advantage over, like a notable advantage, over spots like five through, what is it? Maybe ten or eleven. Mm-hmm. Um. And that's the Timberwolves, the Thunder, the Nuggets, the Clippers. Out of those, like, if we're ranking, you ask me, like, where I have the heat in terms of of teams in the East. Like, the Clippers are probably my second team in the West behind the Nuggets. And it's, one, they do have the playoff experience. They have the guys. They have the talent. They have the defense. They have the coaching. And they they finally have the chemistry. They're playing together. They've committed to that ball. They they took a break from load management. And they've been well rewarded. Mm -hmm. And so I'm... I really like the Clippers this year. Shoot. Um, yeah, I agree with you for sure. And I want to say one thing. Uh, we just got breaking news. Uh, Tristan Thompson has been suspended by the NBA for 25 games. Drug? Due to, yes, drug and substance abuse. I can't believe Tristan Thompson. He's back with the, He was back with the Cavs. Yeah, he <laughs> was back with the Cavs. And I'm sorry, but why, why, if, why, why would you take? Why do you need it? I don't know. Yeah, he's getting like 10, maybe 5 to 10 minutes a game. Um, but um, what was I just about to say? Um, what if that's the reason why the Cavs have been playing so well? They've been on this big winning streak. No, no, <laughs> no. We're not going to put that in the air. We're not going to put that in the air. All I know is that Tristan Thompson, if you did take those you know, the substances on purpose, well, you are too damn big for that. You are way too damn big to take uh, substance uh, substances like that, like he, banned substances. You also from, from don't the need league. to. Like, what are they expecting out of him? 
Like, if he gives you the same minutes that DeAndre Jordan's giving you with the Nuggets, like, they're happy with that. It's not like he has, like, a high expectation. The dude was just in an ESPN, like, suit in, <laughs> in booth. He, he was on the uh, Clutch Sports payroll. Um, <clears throat> he was, for real. Uh, no, no. Uh, for real. LeBron didn't uh, get that man paid. That, that, it was a joke, but, you know, he like every time he was on ESPN for NBA Countdown, NBA Today, all he did was gas up LeBron and the Lakers. Yeah. That, that was what he was there for, yeah. pretty much. I, I don't know. I, that, 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 that confuses me. Um, that boggles my mind, man. There's no reason. No reason. There's no reason. No reason. But let's move on to number three. Who is your three? Yeah, we're going to talk about the team Trisha Thompson played for last year, and Ooh. that's the, uh, the L.A. Lakers. Yeah. Interesting. See, for me, championship pressure-wise, I didn't think that I could have the Lakers. Because I don't I, – I genuinely – I understand they have two top ten players. I don't see this team as a championship team. No, but at the same time, there's like – there's two reasons – Mm-hmm. Why I have them this high? Uh-huh. LeBron James, Anthony Davis. By the way, by the way, we can talk about this if you want. We don't have to, but for those of you at home, uh, in our group chat, we always talk basketball. We always talk sports, like any group chat. But this man Debo filled out an NBA All Star starter player starters and just All Star roster. Yeah, pretty, yeah roster. Yeah. I'm I'm probably gonna make a reel out of that. But in the, we should in the uh, future. we should maybe do that because we should just do an episode. On that. Low key, yeah. Low key. Let's go. Um, but he had Anthony Davis and LeBron starting. I gotta ask you, does winning not matter anymore? Does winning not matter? <laughs> well, for for the All Star game, the criteria mainly has been winning, uh, especially for for being a starter, right? And I I, I thought really for the team, well, for LeBron and AD right now, mm-hmm. I I put AD in there. Off the reason that no AD for sure I'd have AD over LeBron. Candidate. Hey, but you'll never put LeBron out of the starters. No, I'm like if if I'm doing like a like based off this year because mm-hmm. fan voting always is gonna have LeBron as a captain until he retires. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have Steph and I wouldn't have LeBron, and mm-hmm. it doesn't feel right. But I think that's what you have to do this year. Because that's. You're talking about two top ten players that have dominated and, and been st- guaranteed starters over the last ten years, and now they're not starters. I think KD has to be a starter with mm. the Suns and with what, especially he's making a very convincing argument lately. Back to back forty pieces and a game winner over Patrick Williams last night. Um, I mean, you could argue Kawhi too. You could argue Kawhi mm-hmm. too with all the okay. with all the Clippers. I think AD for or AD should start though. Depoy defense, and I think he's been their best player. For the late for for Lakers, yeah. <sighs> to be honest, I I don't mind that take. I, I, I think Danny would agree. Well. I think he for sure would agree. Yeah, and hopefully we can have him, um, in this lovely studio Facts. in the coming future. Facts. Because I know he's around here in these Facts. parts at this time, but uh, continue, that that's for another day. About the Lakers. That's for another day. Right. <clears throat> With their timeline, LeBron and AD, automatically it's a win now every year. I don't care that the Lakers are in, in the playing the playing tier right now. Mm-hmm. That team's a win now team every year with those two players. Uh-huh. And with the team, the offseason, they tricked us. We all thought they were the offseason champs. Oh, yeah. They got Gabe, Gabe Vincent. Torian Prince, Christian Wood. Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish. We signed Vando and Austin Reeves. And Hachimura. And Rui. And really, from that entire list of players that we just mentioned, only really Austin Reeves yeah. has been a contributor. Yeah. Uh, well, Rui, I think, is out right now, right? Mm-hmm. It, doesn't Rui got injury? And then Vando just came back from work. Um, Lakers, of course, you can say with their timeline. I do want to talk about something else with the Lakers. Mm-hmm. And this season specifically, we've kind of noticed a new trend in the league, right? We saw the Clippers trade for James Harden super early in the season, like November. We're talking right at the beginning of the season, right? Mm -hmm. We saw the Knicks trade for OG in January, right? We're seeing these teams make moves now, and they've been rewarded, right? The the Clippers, they started 0-5, and now they've been, like, the best team over the last 20-game stretch. I think they've been, like, 18-2, or or that might be – 
a stretch, but like they've been really good. They've been like one of the best teams in the league since that losing streak. Mm-hmm. Um, the Knicks, right? The Knicks, obviously, they got off to that. They got the Josh Hart boost last year where he came in and won seven games. And the Knicks are eight and two with OG on Anobi. Um, and you're seeing like these teams work out their kinks. Like OG was just setting screens the first game, like whenever he got confused. And the Clippers, they started with that losing streak, but they had so much time to recalibrate and work together that like they were able to to change their season and change the course of the season and build that chemistry. The Lakers, you're in all these trade rumors. Every single day I'm seeing a new trade rumor. Tyus Jones. Um, <laughs> it was Terry Rozier, Zach Levine, Bruce Brown, like just an endless amount of players. And you're still waiting to make that trade. The, ch- the roster is clearly not good enough. We can agree. No. no but no, but no, why no. are you waiting to make the trade? Like, with LeBron especially, we saw last year, they just didn't have enough chemistry. They were 18-2, and two, and in the biggest moment, they were still starting new lineups together. Like, mm-hmm. I think if you bring in the right pieces right now, you, ha- you have that extra time to build that chemistry. LeBron can figure out dudes' tendencies and make them look like the, the best coming of Jordan or the next coming of Jordan. Mm-hmm. Like... I, I just think that they've been kind of like asleep and they need to be proactive, especially as they're fighting for a 10 seed. Right. They they do need to be very proactive, mm-hmm. uh, especially with the trade deadline coming up. D'Lo, I don't see this man being with the team uh, past February. No, neither Rui. Austin Reeves might leave this team soon in the trade. They're saying, well, I think he should leave the team really? if, if there if there's a really? trade if there if there's the right trade being put in place. Would you do? I saw this on Instagram the other day. It was Dejounte Murray and Bogdan Bogdanovich for Re for Reeves, Reeves Vando maybe I, don't, I can't remember if it was Vando. it was Reeves Russell in like a third piece. I think it was Vando or maybe Hachimura. Would you do it? <sighs> I don't like DeJounte Murray with that Lakers. I don't like DeJounte Murray with pretty much every team he's linked with at all just because of him as a player, really. A l- limited shooter, needs the ball, high usage guy to have the best offensive ability that he's got. And be, you're, he's going well, to put him on, on a team with both Braun and AD. He's going to be... The, the third the third option at best mm-hmm. I just don't see that being a great fit for that Lakers team that's fair he he put AD to work in that pick and roll I think that pick and roll would be nice but like I don't know it depends what the Lakers want to do do they want the LeBron that was off ball against the Warriors or do they want the on ball LeBron that was like phenomenal in the first half of game four against the against the Nuggets I would prefer them to go off ball due to the high usage rate mm-hmm. that he could potentially have, mm-hmm. which LeBron, he's LeBron. He's a physical anomaly, but at the same time, he's not getting any younger. Right, so right. for for a team that has him, you don't want to do – you don't want him to have the ball in his hands all, all game like he did a decade ago during his prime. That That's not sustainable. Okay, that's fair. I do want to say this, back to what I was talking about. I don't want to be the devil's advocate, but I do feel like maybe one reason they haven't made the trade yet is because Raul Palinka just doesn't believe in the team. Like, he says, like, look, I can bring in whoever you want to link me to, Tyus Jones, all the names I've mentioned before. I just don't think that whatever move we make is going to make us a championship contender or, like, a, a championship winning team. And that's why he doesn't want to give up future assets. That, but that's, like, the only, only scenario I could see why you haven't made a trade yet. 23 on the team, man. 23. 23 is on the team. You got to. Best 39-year-old of all time, by the way. What, in not just basketball, but like in any sport? For sure. Well, how old was Brady <laughs> when when he went against the Chiefs? What, in 2020? 20, 20. 2020? 20, 20, what is it? I think it was I, 2021. I know, I know he was like well, well above 40. He was well above 40. Four forty four, he was forty four. Give me Brown, give me Brown. Tom Bra- Brady throwing passes. LeBron is dunking on Paul George. Hey, Tom Brady was top five. It, it well in, into his forties. Yes, this is true. This is true. Brown is like you can you can make an argument for top five. Yeah, you still can. Yeah, you still can. Um, but my number three was the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, and it's really two reasons. 
and I'm going to give you a simple question, and all I want is a number, okay? How many championships combined have Daryl Morey and Joel Embiid won? Fuck all, zero. Exactly. That, that's the reason why they have so much pressure. Joel Embiid, 70-piece 70, 70 last night. Um, he's averaging 36 a game right now in, like, 35 minutes, which is just absurd. Um, and no matter what he does in the regular season, everybody's going to say, do it in the playoffs. This has to be the year he does it. Otherwise, this, the narratives are going to go crazy. Um, and then Daryl Morey. Daryl Morey has, has, has a bit of pressure, in my opinion, just because, one, I think this team needs a trade before the trade deadline. I'd be shocked if this team doesn't make a trade before the trade deadline. I don't think it, it needs to be necessarily a big trade, but like a third piece. Because um, you never know what Tobias you're going to get in the playoffs. Even with his improved role, he's he's like, improved. He he he's been more involved, way more involved in the offense than Shout any year than any year he was with Doc mm-hmm. or Brett Brown. Yeah, um, and you do have quality role players like um, Kelly Oubre. Nick Batum's been solid for them, uh, but like you could trade Marcus Morris, you can trade Robert Covington, um, and you could get like I don't know. D'Anthony Melton's been good in the starting lineup, but I think they could improve there. And I think, like, because right now they're a bit small. They have Tyrese, they have Kelly Oubre, and they have DeAnthony Mellon, even though DeAnthony Mellon plays bigger than his size. I think that they could use another, like, forward just in general. Like, I don't know who's on the market. Well, do you think Bruce Brown or? I would like Bruce Brown for them. Bruce Brown's actually, I think OG was their ideal target. Yeah. But I think Bruce Brown would be, like, a really good fit for them. Mm. He'd be solid. Um, and he's like another mold of those type of players that they have. Bro, I, I thought Jaden McD- uh J Jalen McDaniels. I, I thought he was gonna be the guy for them last year when they oh, acquired no, him no. during the trade deadline, but that didn't work out. He was getting DMPs in the playoffs. Nah. If it was Jaden McDaniels, they would have they the Sixers would be on some shit right now. Fair. <laughs> that that would be very oh, nice. But I just feel like they they got so much pressure. Joel wants to build his legacy and he wants to prove that he's one of the greats. Um, Daryl Morey, he's always had these questions. Can he do it in Houston? Can he do it in Philly? He's always had great players. And if he can't do it this year, then it's like all hell breaks loose. Um, So I have the Sixers at three. Okay. Who's your number two? The L.A. Clippers. Okay. Okay. L.A. Clippers with the big three, PG, Kawhi, Harden. Uh It, It was very rocky to start. Super rocky. They lost to a Nuggets team. Uh, without Jamal and Jokic, uh, the Reggie Jackson and DeAndre Jordan legacy games, yeah. that was interesting to see. And then since then, they've been unstoppable. Yeah, they, they've been great. With Harden, they have a 23-12 record. They're all fully healthy. The uh, PG and Kawhi, they've been the healthiest they've ever been yeah. since their first year back in 2019. Yeah. They've only missed six games combined between the two this season. Wow. And we're like midway through the season. But yeah, imagine telling Clippers fans last year, even two years ago, that they would be they they would still be healthy at this point. Yeah, that's and, huge. And they've been great too as well when they've been playing together. No, for sure. And and to continue, healthiest they've ever been since the first year. The big threes joining together. All the role players are playing within their specific roles. Russ Zubak, I know he's banged up right now. He's he's not. He's not in the lineup with his injury, but he's been very solid as a pick and roll big with mm-hmm. Harden uh, mm-hmm. in that game. Mm-hmm. Th- it's the year right now for them to make the conference finals again in the West, or even make the NBA Finals. Can I can I say something? Um, you know I listen to Zach Lowe, right? Yeah. And Zach Lowe, he um, I don't know if he lives in the LA or the Cali area, but he he he's down there quite a bit. And because of that, he goes to Clippers games, right? And he watches with Clipper execs. And he had, he had a like, assistant coach on. And the assistant coach was raving about James Harden and how well, like, like when he came in, like, when James Harden came to the Clippers locker room, he was saying the narrative was, like, this dude just wants to party. He wants to go to the club. He's going to come in with a fast suit if he's not happy. Trying to hang out with a little baby all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And he said, like, every day after practice before uh, Zoo was hurt, like, Zoo, Mason Plumley, and, and Tice would stay like 15 to 20 minutes after every practice and just practice pick and roll plays. And it's like, and he was saying like, James Harden's like always one of the first people in the gym. And it's like, 
like where was this James Harden? I've never heard about this James Harden before. Like, it, like it's great to see, and it, and I think it's a huge reason why the Clippers are playing as well as they are. Mm-hmm. And like, he's built that chemistry. He's he's building the rapport with the guys. I mean, him and Zubac like have been a phenomenal pick and roll, and, and he's not even having high usage this year. Like his usage, it's Kawhi, and then it's him. And he's not really doing anything with the ball unless it is a pick and roll. And that's where he's best at. And so, like, Ty Lue's figured it out. Russ has accepted a bench roll. Norman Powell is shooting, like, 45% on catch and three, on catch and shoot threes, which is exactly what they need. Like, like all pieces are clicking for them. Um, so, yeah, this has to be the year for them. It has to be. And with the Clippers, they're one of the oldest rosters in the league. Their main core, besides Zubots, uh, they're all in their 30s yeah. or well into their 30s. Yeah. We don't know when there's going to be a fall off with either PG, Harden, Kawhi, even Russ soon. Mm-hmm. So at this point in this year, with how well the team's been playing, this could be their best chance to potentially win a championship. For sure. I think it is. Last year I had Clippers Sixers finals. We'll see how that ages this year. Yeah, I had a Clippers Bucks finals, and that aged like milk. So we'll we'll see what happens. We we both had Nuggets Celtics. That shit's not looking bad either. Nope. Um, that'd be a great series. My too. number two. That'd be a very good series. My number two. The first player that we have on the list, Damian Lillard. Oh man. What do you think? I actually have him outside my top five. Oh. I have well, him I assume, outside my I top five. I, I kind of put him in as an honorable mention, but... Okay. Um, what's the excuse now, Dan? I've, I've been making excuses for you all these years. Damien Lillard, you are under, you're under watch. You are under surveillance, my brother. Yeah. Um, the, bu- the Bucks are the two seed, but their record is better than the, how, how they've played this year, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um. And when I look at this team, it's like Giannis has been phenomenal this year. You're getting, like, w- the best Giannis that he has to give. Um, and, like, the defense hasn't been there, and Dame hasn't been the same. And notoriously, we've always said, like, Dame just needs some help in the playoffs, right? If you remember, like, even when he did make the conference finals against the Warriors and KD was down, like, his starting center was Enos Kanter. He had... Al Farouk Aminu, he had Evan Turner coming off the bench. Like, the team just wasn't well orchestrated. Mo Harkless. Mo Harkless. Who else was there? Uh, Seth Curry. Seth Curry. That young Seth Curry, Rodney Hood. Rodney Hood, bro, the the dagger he had Uh, versus the Nuggets. Nuggets. I remember that. Bro, he was barely, he barely played that game. Then he hit the dagger three. That was crazy. But, like, we always said it's it's about roster construction. And this Bucks team, we've seen them win a championship. Minus Drew Holiday, but, like, you have Chris Middleton. I I want to see them play uh, Andre Jackson more. His minutes have been really good. Same with Mario and Bochamp. Um, but like this Bucks roster, they're aging. Brooke Lopez, he obviously has been uh, has had back surgery and is aging. Chris Middleton has had surgeries and he's getting up there. Um, Bobby Portis, even if it Drake Jay Crowder finally gets minutes, <laughs> um, I, I could see Bobby Portis being traded uh, before the deadline. But what are you getting back for Bobby Portis? Or what do you want back for Bobby Portis? Like, what what do they need? Three and D guys, just defenders. See, Malik Beasley's been great this year from three, just not on D at all. But, and we we kind of expected that heading yeah, into the but year. Yeah, that, that's that's his comp. Like, yeah, if if Drew Holiday is still there, then that's a great signing. Um, it would be a great signing, but obviously they traded Drew to yeah. get Dame, but, and and I, I can understand uh, where they're coming from uh-huh. to get an elite score yeah. alongside Giannis and, and, and Damian Lillard. Mm-hmm. But that Drew Holiday departure, impact. It, the impact it had defensively as well, mm-hmm. man, they are missing his presence a lot. They are. They are. Um, so I, I have Damian too. I have Damian too just because he has to win. They have to win. Like, this team, idea, they probably have a two-year window. They're going to say that this year is the gelling year if it doesn't go right. Yeah, but that, 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 that the aspirations the, are championship or bust. That was the main reason why I didn't have Dame in, in this top five is because of the gelling period. That's fair. Usually with big acquisitions like this, a big two, big three being formed, the first year is the gelling year. Mm-hmm. You get all the kinks out. Mm-hmm. 
uh, guys fit into their roles, get into the s- situations where they're they're best suited towards. And then the year after that is the point where, yo, we got to win. This mm-hmm. is the year where we, we need to win a championship. Mm-hmm. That's fair. But I, I, I think, like, what I was saying about how the teams were who traded early, like, we're doing it to build that championship boost. Like, as opposed to what the Suns did last year where it was at the trade deadline and you're really figuring out on the fly. Like, this was before the season. This was before training camp. Like, they've had plenty of time together. So, like, I understand you might want to call it gelling, like, oh, it's a first-year head coach, too, who, I mean, he's, I don't know. I haven't really been impressed with Adrian Griffin. No, it's, I can't say that. no it, he's been subpar right. for what kind of roster he's been given. Hey, a lot of people been crapping on Joe Mazzula. A lot of people been crapping on my guy Joe Mazzula ever since he's been the Boston head, the Celtics head coach. Mm-hmm. But at least with the roster he's been having, that's fair. That's that fair. team's been looking way more competent than the Bucks under Adrian Griffin. Yes, I, I do agree. Um, I got to take my W. Which, by the way, Missoula had a really good coaching game against the Mavs last night. I was sure locked did. in on you guys. A uh, great win. I was low key. I was paying a little bit more attention towards Cat and Embiid's night because that's obviously fair. he was scoring nice. But again, we 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 played a great game versus. See, Dallas. I watched. Sixers Spurs first half because I wanted to see him beat versus Wemby, mm-hmm. and like uh, uh, Wemby had a good first half. He had like eighteen and like eight, I think. But I mean, like it was like thirty two for Joel. I came back from half and he had like fifty. I was like, okay, so they're just not gonna defend him. Bro, they they was putting <laughs> Embiid in single coverage. Yeah, they were, they were. Embiid Embiid was so dominant. Like as a scorer, it's arguably the best I've seen in my lifetime. I, his scoring route was Will Chamberlain. As like best score. Did you see he recreated the pick, but with seventy? Oh uh, yeah, I don't know why they didn't do it with Sharpie. I could barely see the number. Yeah, on it. they should have. Yeah, they should have. Oh, but hey, he, hey, now quick question though: Do you do you think Wolves one hundred point games real? Did it happen for real? Uh, I don't know. So I'll say yes, but there's a decent chance that it did. <laughs> but as a basketball fan, I want to think that it's happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's cool that only one person has scored 100. But was it truly, truly real? Did it truly happen, though? Was it the truly? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Back to the list. You told me you, you had a player on your list, right? Mm-hmm. And we're at number one, so we don't have the same number one. Which I'm, I'm curious how you don't have my team on here. But we'll get to them. Why I don't have the Knicks? No, 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 no. Oh, uh, team, like one of the like my number one. one. Of your team. My number one isn't on your list, then, because you're at your number one. Well, because if you if you're gonna say the Knicks, now I would have said yo, you're fucking crazy. Oh no, no, no. Knicks, Knicks are not even probably in the top ten. Okay. But who is your number one? My number one. Well, it's kind of combined right now, but mainly I'm going to talk about Joel Embiid. Okay, go ahead. Mister Joel Hans Embiid. It's it's time, brother. It's time. There's no excuses. Zero excuses. You have the best coach you've ever had in your playing career in Nick Nurse. Uh, compared to Doc Rivers and Brett Brown, the Sixers under Nick Nurse have looked the most competent offensively and defensively. They look like the most complete team. Arguably the best running man you've ever had in Philly, especially since Jimmy Buckler's departure and Tyrese Maxey. He's had a he's took he's took the leap this year. Mm-hmm. Um he's most likely gonna win MIP most improved uh with a higher <laughs> with more opportunity. I, yeah, I like, I, I, I you, you're, like shaking your head. you're shaking your head. You're shaking your head. I I think it should go to Sangoon from Houston. I really do. Sangoon's a good one. It's gonna go to Shang well could, it should go to Sangoon in my see opinion. Derek White. I could see Jalen Williams. Ah, no, nah, I don't want to give it to a two year player. Mm-hmm. Um or third year, third year. Right. But continue. Philly, this Philly team, how it's constructed right now, the most complete roster you've ever had. You're going to win your second MVP in your career. You're averaging 55 points per game, averaging a triple-double every night too, putting up crazy historical numbers, put up 70 points against the Spurs the other night. This is the perfect season to prove every doubter wrong that you are a perennial playoff choker, which who could blame them from your previous playoff performances? Mm -hmm. 2018, got beat by Boston in the second round, played like trash. 2019, lose in the second round to Toronto, 
You play like garbage. 2021, the Hawks series, blow a 3-2 lead. Play like trash in that series as well. 2022, against the Heat, played bad. Last year against Boston, blow, blew a 3-2 lead. When in game six, you had the chance of giving Philly fans their greatest moment ever since AI stepped over Tyron Lue in the finals by taking them to the Eastern Conference Finals for the first time since, since 01. This year, you have the perfect opportunity to prove every doubter wrong about you and your playoff failures and to etch yourself as a proven all-time great and not just some guy that put up a bunch of stats, a bunch of numbers against the Washington Witches of the world and the Charlotte Hornets of the world in a regular season, you have the opportunity to make yourself into an actual threat, an actual winning basketball player. It's time. It is time. Mm -hmm. Has to be. Has to be. Um, yeah, I, I said everything I got to say about Joel, and I think you nailed it. Um, I do want to say I was looking at most improved player. I don't know how we didn't mention Jalen Johnson. Oh, he, he he should be top three. Be. And, and my God, my God, hey, I was so right about Jalen Johnson. I was right about Jalen Johnson. I, I knew for a fact that they should have been giving away more burn mm -hmm. than DeAndre Hunter. Mm -hmm. DeAndre Hunter should no, be traded. No, John Collins. They had to trade John Collins. Deon to well, both DeAndre Hunter and even John Collins, yeah, too, because yeah. of Jalen Johnson's high, higher ceiling. And he has been bowling this year. On a disappointing, on a very disappointing Hawks team, mm -hmm. which salute to him for that. He's one of uh, Atlanta's br uh, brighter spots right now. What seems like a very bleak future for them, even yeah. with Trey Young. Yeah, get well soon, Trey Young. Concussion protocol for concussion. Um, but I, my number one, and I was shocked you didn't have them. The Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics don't got championship pressure. Tell me, Tatum don't got pressure this year. I'm just, I'm just curious. Like, how, how could they not make the list, even if they're five? Joe Mazzulla don't got pressure. He's coaching for his job right now <laughs> this year. Everybody's got pressure except Brad Stevens. Right, because he's done nothing wrong since becoming GM. No, like every off season, we've we've hit home runs yeah. every time. Porzingis this year. Getting Porzingis. Drew Holiday or, too. Or getting yeah, Drew Holiday. Us getting Malcolm Brogdon for his value, and then flipping Malcolm Brogdon. Yeah. <laughs> it, damn. I, but you know, no, I'm gonna be completely honest. Hmm. I was ducking from the smoke. That's fair. That's I was fair. ducking from the smoke, and I, and fair. I apologize. That's fair. And I apologize for that, uh, for but, our fan base. I was ducking from the smoke. I'll be completely honest. See, if this was the Chiefs, you would have wanted this one. I would, I would have been wanting this one because we, we have proven to, you know, yeah. uh, step up in those moments. But, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna talk about the Celtics for a sec. The Celtics, the last couple years in the playoffs. Let's just, let's just go back in history, right? Conference finals last this year, where you were down 3-0, right? At mm -hmm. one point, year before. Um, you lose in the finals where you kind of have the more talented team, but you lose like some moments where Jordan Poole goes bananas and, and, and you let Andrew Wiggins look the best he's ever looked. Um, the year before that, lost to Philly in the playoffs. Uh, or, I mean, lost to the Heat in the playoffs. Um, was that, that was the bubble year, I believe, right? Um, so you have those years of disappointment. Jalen Brown just got this massive extension. You make all these off-season trades where you look like the favorite. You're f like, what is it? What are you guys at home? Thirty-nine and one or something right now? Yeah. Like just a ridiculous home record. The best first quarter, one of the best first quarter teams in the league. It has to be this year. We're talking about it's time for Joel. This has to be the Celtics year. Like your team is too complete. Tatum is is trying to make his cases to be one of the greats. He wants to be in that MVP conversation. This is how he can get there. You're not lying. I'm saying. You're, you're not lying. And Joe Mazzulla's coaching for his job, too. If they go out in the conference finals again, you know he's gone. You guys, half the fan base wanted him gone last year. <laughs> nah, I, nah, my, 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 man been, my man going through it. He going through it. And I'm actually a Missoula believer. Mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> contrary to the Celtics fan base, I'm actually a believer in Missoula. Mm -hmm. I feel like 
with this roster we have, I truly believe he is capable of coaching and leading this team to a championship this season. See, I, I think he's a good coach. I, you guys play well under him. I just the only thing like I really dislike is just how he uses his timeouts. This timeouts, um, the tendency with three the the three point shot, which for how this offense is constructed, mm-hmm. I I understand, but with our main two guys, Brown and Tatum. I do want them to have more of their attempts inside the paint when they're given the opportunities right. instead of settling for, for for jump shots. Right. Because in the playoffs, when the defense, the, the teams tying up their de- defense, and they look to your look towards your tendencies and try to um, diminish them, your your positives on the court. Mm-hmm. Our three point shooting can be exploded, and with the three point shot, it can be very streaky. Yeah, very very streaky. Yeah, and we, we saw that last year versus the Heat. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the reasons why we were down three zero is that our shooting was poor, and we couldn't match up against Miami, who were very hot from three. Right, the entire postseason run. Right. No, and you also just brought like. This veteran ship. Like, I promise you, Drew Holiday is going to have one game where he just goes bananas and takes you over the top when, like, Tatum can't get the shot to fall or Brown can't get the shot to fall. Like, he's going to have one of those games. Porzingis. Porzingis has been a revelation for this Celtics team. Um, I would like a maybe a bigger backup guard, like, like as a trade piece. I want, I want another wing. wing. I, I want another wing. wing. Sam Hauser... I, I, I've been a Sam Hauser guy for the longest, but I can clearly see uh, now why Missoula was looking towards Grant for the majority Grant's of those not been great either. No, he hasn't, but at the same time, I can see why he decided to go over Grant, uh-huh. then Hauser during that playoff run last year. Because with Hauser, when the shot is not falling, what can he remotely do well on the basketball court? No. And he's not, he hasn't, Defensively, he hasn't been that great this season either, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so there's well, not a Stevens lot of positives. Has been right, though. But I mean, he's more playing like a backup big than we. I don't want him to get a ton of playoff minutes. I really don't. That's fair. Brissett or um, Wall. Yeah, Brissett. Oh, well, Wallace. He's still very raw, so yeah, I don't want is. him to get it uh, to have it begin with. But yeah, Brissett and Lamar Stevens too as well. Yeah, I mean, you got your backup big figured out. As long as your two bigs stay healthy, you're no. We we position. don't need a backup big. Yeah. I, I I think Horford if you were to go, yeah, Horford and Porzingis, and then if you were to go with another backup big, a third big in the playoffs, then I'd rather go with Cornette than than Akeda. Cornette hasn't been bad. He he was decent Cor- last like time. as as the third best big, like the the backup big, he's mm-hmm. been fine in his role. So I don't I don't mind him. 